an interview, yeah? No. Hi, I'm uh, Dr Tony Cox. I'm uh, President of the ICGP. Um, I'm a GP in Ennis in County Clare and I'm a GP trainer. Um, I was an examiner for 19 years and I was chair of the exams, the MICGP exams. So I'm here in uh, Kiel in County Mayo, uh, visiting the Mayo faculty of the ICGP. They're having their study weekend and uh, it's a lovely setting and I'm delighted to be here. And I've got a great welcome since I came here and I've met Ollie who's behind the camera there at the moment. So what does the ICGP do now? Uh, the ICGP is a membership organisation, so everybody has equal footing and equal standing in it. So what do we do? We, we provide a support network for our members. Uh, we uh, make uh, we try to uh, deliver, help our members to deliver the best quality of care, best standards of care, uh, the safest kind of standard of care for our patients in the community. We try to you know, we give a college a structure, a background, a support network for our members. Uh, you know, like it can be difficult at times, it can be uh, being a GP, it can be rewarding many, many times being a GP. And we help members, we provide structures for them with through CME and through um, conferences and meetings and the faculty structure that I'm talking about here today, uh, support for our members uh, through that, you know. So, so you're um, more of an academic body than a union? We're an academic, we're totally, uh, yeah, well, not academic, I suppose. We, we're not a union, we're, we're a pain We do not get involved in negotiations, we leave that to the unions in Ireland. Uh, so GP training is important, you know, that's one. So training, education and support for our members, those are the main things we we do and uh, standards and quality of care and patient safety. They would be our main buzzwords or our main focus. Yeah. How long are you in GP yourself? Uh, GP myself, uh, I uh, did the GP training scheme in Dublin, uh, qualified in 1990 or graduated from that in 1990 and uh, got a job, uh, uh, was trained with Martin White and Nobber, loved that, in Mead and uh, soon after went out there looking for jobs, uh, doing the interviews. Uh, at those times you used to do two days of interviews and uh, you know you really had no hope of getting your list uh, whereas nowadays uh, if they're lucky if one or two people turns up for the interviews but I uh, got my job in Carrigo Holt in West Clare which is a setting a little bit like this uh, off Loop Head in County Clare did my three years there and got a job in Ennis and there I've been since 1994 And have you seen many changes in GP in your time now? You know I have I, I didn't think that I was in general practice that long but uh, uh -huh. you know I suppose like uh, when I was in West Clare, um, there were the rotas, you just had small rotas and you were depending on your colleagues to support you and to welcome you into their small rota. And I was when I went to West Clare. Now you have the GP co-ops, you know, these very large structures that at least, uh, you know, in those times my wife, who's a fellow GP, she was at home at base camp basically taking the phone calls. I was out and about doing the calls in places like Cora Clare and Kildizert and all these places in West Clare. And I go to a phone box to phone home, is anybody else looking for me, Denise? And I'd be sent off to somewhere else to kill rush to meet patients or kill key those days are gone and our families at least are uh, separate now from the whole on-call structure and i think that's great and uh, i think we have better support in the co-op structure as well so that's certainly one big change i see um, gp training has become a much bigger um, structure now as well i was on the dublin regional vocation training scheme there was only one and uh, now there's 14 schemes around the country and we're training uh, 157 GPs for general practice. So there's a big change there. See many ministers come and many ministers go over the years with different ideas and uh, our current minister has, uh, say, as it was I delivered a talk there at the faculty meeting, they're just there now. And we were talking about some of the developments that are happening in general practice. So lots of things have changed. Yeah? Lots what are the challenges? Future? Uh, the, well, I mean, the, uh, GPs, uh, yes, it does lots of things really. Young GPs, uh, we met them at their GP training conference down there in um, Lyrath in October and we asked them, you know, like how many of them plan to work full time in general practice. Not so many, very, very few mm. hands went up. Uh, they see the future for general practice that maybe they will work uh, a number of days, not actually take on the responsibilities of running the practice themselves and maybe have a couple of days working in a hospital environment or maybe have a couple of days working in a teaching environment. So portfolio careers. Uh, so that is a challenge because that's certainly a big change uh, you know, from their traditional GP who goes out there, takes on a list and takes on all the responsibilities of running that list and resourcing and funding that list and running it as a business. Uh, young GPs or many of them, very few of them now seem to want to do it that way. Uh, other challenges, you know, like uh, members are finding these last six, seven years of financial challenge to be very, very difficult and very disillusioning for them. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, dis disenchanted GPs out there and met some GPs in Qatar who uh, felt that they actually had to emigrate to uh, make ends meet and to get their families through college, which is very, very sad to think that 
that the future here in Ireland was so uh, worrying for them that they didn't see that they could make men's meet financially. So that's a challenge for a college uh, to try and get general practice back to where it was before and move on to the future, delivering better standards of care, better quality of care to our patients. Lots of challenges. I mean, I, I, I had a list of eight of them in there. If you want me to mention more of them, I can certainly do so. But they'd be the main ones. Um, chronic disease management, we all do it in our practices. Uh, it doesn't get recognised, uh, it doesn't get resourced properly. Yes, we do it. Uh, so at least the new contract promises some little bit of uh, resourcing towards that. So it's a start, it's a start, but there's a lot more to do. There's a lot more chronic disease management to be done than what we've got promised at the moment. Do you think there's a movement of uh, people to move towards hospital treatment rather than general practice? Um, no, I, it's hard to answer that. I mean, uh, patients will always turn to the general practitioner as the person who maybe understands things a bit better and can explain things a bit better. You know, like I mean, even yesterday, I had a patient come in with his letter from hospital. He spent six days in there and he had no notion what had been done or what had, the decisions made. And, you know, he, un he felt that his GP might be able to tease that out for him. And we did. Yeah. You know, so I think we'll always be there to do that for them. And I think that we certainly will always be one of their most trusted uh, medical professionals. Uh, you know that the GP will always be some of the GP that patients will turn to. Uh, hospital based, yeah, I suppose the faraway hills are green and patients see the hospitals with the resources, the massive resources they have, and you know the investigation of their problems and the X rays and blood tests, etc., etc. Uh, and and they see that general practice maybe is not as resourced as well as it should be. So yeah, I mean faraway hills are greener and they do look to the hospital as being the place where their problems might get sorted out properly. But I think we'll always be trusted and I think we'll always be appreciated and I think patients will always need us and always will want us. So, so you're coming to the end of your term? Coming to the end of my term, you have two weeks left and uh, I have enjoyed it, I really have enjoyed it. Um, I'm here in Mayo and it's the 20th stop on my tour of the faculties. Uh, I've had some great places. This is certainly one of the nicest I've been in and a uh, beautiful background, beautiful setting and a great welcome here. Um, I just think it's important, as like what's the president do? I think you're an ambassador for your college, you're an ambassador for your members. You need to get out there and meet your members, hear their concerns, hear their worries and bring that back to college, bring it back to the board. And uh, if you can do something about it, do something about it, you know. So I think I just want to be a more active president and get out there and meet people. Uh, hopefully I've done so and hopefully I've uh, maybe uh, got, uh, you know, like where I went in Galway, I met some young GPs. Two of them were trainees of mine, can't get into a CME group. I mean, that's crazy. These were fantastic trainees of mine, fantastic registrars, fantastic young doctors, and they can't get into the ICGP and the HSE's own CME structure. So that's crazy. And I was in Waterford there on Wednesday, and the same there as well. You know, so you, like, unless you get out and about, you're not going to hear these concerns. And Ollie himself has raised a few concerns with me there, and there's a few other things there where it was mentioned that ICGP should be advocating for. So unless you get out and hear members of concerns, you're not going to know what's going on. So, okay. so will you get back to normal life after this? Uh, or it'll Kieran, be boring after this. <laughs> Kieran Ryan, the CEO, said to me, "Has Tony take the summer off, and we'll see where we can get you employed." And then after that, so uh, I was thinking, like, what am I going to do when I'm finished? It will be a bit of a downer afterwards, you know. Uh, I really have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed getting around. I like doing what I'm doing. Uh, I like being a GP too, as well. So I mean, that'll keep me occupied, and my patients probably have been a little bit neglected uh, because I've been away quite a bit on the president uh, tour. So maybe my patients will see a little bit more of me now. And my wife, uh, God love her, Denise, uh, who's been great support. Uh, she might see a little bit more of me as well, my family. Uh, but I still want to stay involved and I still want to do something and I still would like to find the right role for me. And I think the ICGP suits me. Uh, I'm not particularly political, so maybe the unions aren't my way. But uh, I think through college I can do a lot more and hope there's a job that I can do something more with. Well, you might finish the day with a nice swim now in, in Keel, <laughs> Keel Bay. It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, it's a gorgeous place. It yeah, really yeah. is a gorgeous place. Absolutely, yeah. It's, a, it, it's, it's, it's the nicest setting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it would remind me of West there, but we don't have mountains in West there. We have the mountains down here. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay, thank